Welcome to Belmont Forum and the e-infrastructures and data management projects, how data management. This is the second toolkit training module of three related to data management. A data management plan is a structured formal document describing roles and responsibilities for maintaining and managing data during and after the conclusion of a research project. Such plans may be a requirement of funding agencies. It is a requirement for the Belmont Forum. It's a formal document that outlines what you will do with your data during and after you complete your research. It also ensures your data is safe for the present and the future. Typical components in a data management plan are information about the data and the data format, metadata, content, and format, policies for accessing the data, sharing the data, and reusing the data, long-term storage and data management considerations, the roles and responsibilities of who is responsible for those tasks, and as well, a budget. Here are a few tools for creating data management plans that exist, uh, just step-by-step -step questions that help you produce one at the end. Uh, the Data Stewardship Wizard is one from the folks um, at GoFair. A data management plan tool, it's a long existing tool, the DMP tool, to help build a data management plan. It's been used by nearly 40,000 users. And DMP Online out of the UK Digital Curation Center uh, for, again, just questions that help you address what needs to be addressed in a data management plan. One tool I use is the data curation profile approach. This was a grant through the Institute of Museum and Library Services in the US to develop a toolkit, this methodology, and a detailed data interview schedule that would allow data curators and managers to acquire an in-depth understanding of the data curation needs of producers and their intended designated communities of end users. This is a way to think sort of in the perspective of a researcher through their data and allow them to tell a data story. A data curation profile allows curators through these interview questions to capture important details about that data story to help build a data management plan. It can be pretty specific because every type of data will have its own curation profile. It will include an overview of the research, the data itself, including the number of files, size of files, and formats of files, the data flow and use, and how it's created, collected, such as the software and metadata, the sharing of the data, the depositing of the data in an institutional repository or elsewhere, additional documentation needed to reuse the data, how to promote discovery of the data, any intellectual property considerations, any tools needed to use the data, linking data to publications, measuring the impact of sharing the data, backups and updates, and data preservation. So the first question from a data curation profile protocol matches really well to the DDOMP number one. You provide a brief overview of your research and then describe the data with how many files, average size of the file, the formats that things are stored in. Those will all be mapped to DDOMP number one. For the data creation profile protocol question number three about data flow and use, this maps really well to the DDOMP number eight. How was the data acquired and collected? What specific software programs or tools or hardware were used in the collection generation of the data? How was locality determined? This might not be applicable for a lot of data, but sometimes the geospatial components are very important, the place and time. And how? What is the accuracy and precision of that data? Those things will matter and impact the fitness of reuse. Uh, data uh, flow and use continued. What specific software programs or tools, hardware are required to utilize this data? Are there any proprietary file formats? Describe briefly the way the data is currently organized, file naming conventions, any existing metadata units, are there detailed annotations, a code book, a data dictionary, sometimes simply columns, headings in a spreadsheet and what they mean are important for reuse. Some considerations for data flow and use. The technical obsolescence is something that occurs when hardware and software are no longer updated, maintained, or used, including when newer versions or services are created or released to replace an older or retired version, or when a technology is discarded outright, typically due to a decline in use. This can happen for any kind of software, 
and when it happens, you might be using a newer version, get different results, and not realize some of the minuscule changes that do impact data analyses. So technical obsolescence is something to consider, something you must be aware of if you've been doing research for a long time. Interoperable is another important element. Uh, the capacity to effectively exchange complete, consistent, and compatible information between computing systems, regardless of differences in hardware, software, and community protocols. Another concept, data lineage. This describes the history of research data, from its origin to how it is used, managed, and stored. It may also be referred to as a data provenance, reflective of the fundamental concept of provenance in archival sciences, which refers to the origin, custody, and ownership of archival records over time. What's nice about data lineage is there's a many tools that sort of track versioning now, uh, but this is a consideration for everyone that is dealing with a lot of data. The types of data also matter. If it's experimental data, observational data, raw or derived data, physical collections have their own uh, sort of limitations and challenges. Models and their inputs, simulation outputs, curriculum materials, software, images, and so forth. The file formats, the justification, why was a file format chosen? The naming conventions. Why were those naming conventions chosen? Do they map to some community standards? How data will be acquired? When and where? All things thought through in a proposal, but still relate to the data management plan, because that's where the data actually will be described. How data will be processed? The software used? Algorithms? The workflows? And quality assurance and control during sample collection, analysis, and processing. Existing data. If existing data are used, and many projects will have existing data, what are their origins? Will your data be combined with existing data? What's the relationship between your data and existing data? How data will be managed in the short term, version control, backing up, security, and protection? And who will be responsible? What metadata are needed? Any details that make data meaningful? How metadata will be created and or captured? Lab notebooks, GPS units, some automated metadata, and what format will be used for the metadata? Standards from the community, discipline, and some justification of the format chosen is needed. These are all just questions to consider as you're discussing the data flow and use within a project. A consent form. I've often asked about some human subjects related research and considerations that are specific to that for a collection of human subjects research that you plan to have be open. You must uh, include that in the consent form. An informed consent typically in the U.S. includes a statement of the study, what the research is about, the description of the risks, the description of the benefits, the disclosure of alternatives. If someone does not want to participate, what else could they do? A confidentiality, typically because the data are anonymized and reported in the aggregate. This lends it to also be open and reused, as long as that's clearly explained. If more than minimal risk, there typically needs to be some compensation or some benefit through medical treatment if there's a sort of risky discussion or some risky procedure involved in the human subjects research. Participation is voluntary. Again, this is a specific thing for consent forms that I'm typically using in the U.S. Um, where people can stop at any time for whatever reason. Um, whom to contact if they do have questions about the research later and do consider compensation if it's something that will be laborious. Uh, U.S. example language, but make sure you check all institutions you're working with for form norms. Everyone has a diff different form, so the idea is to look through all the forms, get one that's approved that will work for all the institutions if you're collaborating across many institutions. Um, again, this is just some example language from my own institution. All data analysis will be conducted with anonymized data. The responses will be linked by a unique identifier for analysis. However, all findings will be reported in the aggregate from anonymized data. Your answers will be kept confidential and only anonymized data will be released publicly. Most research involves some risk to confidentiality and it's possible that someone could find out you were in the study or see your study information, but the investigators believe this risk is unlikely because of the procedures we will use to protect your information. Additionally, these anonymized responses will be openly available via the internet as part of a recent Office of Science and Technology Policy. So this is from, again, the U.S. White House Open Data Policies as of 2013. Put it in a lot of my studies to make sure that people are participating and people can reuse the data from the studies. So this means that responses are anonymized and the data will be openly shared, uh, but only after all possible steps are taken to increase anonymity. 
For the data curation profile protocol number four about storage, this maps really well to DDMP number three and four. Where are the files currently stored? Include the storage medias and any tools used in your management of the data. Are there backups of the data? Who is primarily responsible for managing these files? These are all considerations that still need to be considered even though they're simply answered nowadays compared to when data management plans started. Some storage considerations for everyone. Are there backups of the backups? It might be necessary for high value data to have multiple backups. Usually different copies of backups are kept in different locations. Uh, how long do you keep your backups? It would depend on your specific situation. Uh, understand relevant guidelines. What are some of the long-term storage and access solutions that are relevant for the project? And who will be around after a project ends? Changes in the status of the project, funding, or key staff are important reasons to have full understanding of related options and requirements for storage and access. Storage needs to be as sustainable as anything else, so it is a consideration. For the DCP protocol number five, that maps really well to the DDOMP number six and number seven. This is stakeholders, who's the intellectual property owner of this data? Who's the intended audience of this data? Is the data intended to be made available for reuse by others? Who might you imagine would be interested in this data? How might this data be used? So for roles and responsibilities, personnel have to be assigned. Who will be responsible for implementing the data management plan? How will adherence to this data management plan be monitored for compliance? And what process is in place for transferring responsibility for the data in perpetuity? Who will have responsibility over time for decisions about the data once the original personnel are no longer available? All things to at least think about in a plan. Some other stakeholder considerations. Who owns the copyright? Is there some institutional policy informing this? Are there funding agency policies informing who has copyright, who owns the data? Embargoes for political or commercial reasons. Any embargoes that you should note? How should data be cited when used? And should there be some persistent citation? Choosing an open license. Why use an open license? It facilitates data sharing and discovery, increases visibility of your data, and advances knowledge. This is also essential for the fair data principles because machines will not just assume something is open or freely available to use. They would need some kind of license to allow them to access the data. Creative Commons is CC0, not a license, but a waiver. It's one that is pretty simple to include in your metadata. There's also a few others where you want on attribution, perhaps, attribution no derivatives, and so forth. For the DCP protocol number six, the DDOMP number nine, costs are a consideration as well for the Belmont Forum. How are data management efforts funded? And what is the percentage of a project's total budget allocated for data management? These are things just to think about. What are the anticipated costs? Time for data preparation and documentation? Hardware software for data preparation and documentation? Dedicated personnel are a cost. Also, there can be costs for archives and repository costs, depending on your institution or your country. And how will those costs be paid, both during the project and in perpetuity? Again, if you have other questions, there's many other tools available through the toolkit about data management training on all sorts of topics and plenty of best practices and standards as well. Thank you.